the water cycle. The water that we use at home, or do you mean like in the river? Precipitation, evaporation, and then rain, and then evaporation again, but I'm missing parts of it, I'm sure I am. Most people know a little bit about the water cycle. Water from lakes, rivers, streams and the sea gets heated by the sun and evaporates into vapour, just like steam from your kettle. As water vapour rises, it gradually cools into tiny little water droplets. We call this process condensation. Clouds are formed. Gradually, these droplets group together and become heavier than the surrounding air. This causes them to fall to the ground as either rain, snow, sleet or hail, depending on the air temperature. Rainwater flows overland into lakes, rivers and streams, which then heads back to the sea. It also infiltrates into the ground, filling underground natural sources known as aquifers. As we take water from various rivers and groundwater sources, the quality can vary. This means that our treatment process needs to be tailored to ensure the best quality possible. Between the water falling from the sky and coming through your taps, there's a whole process that involves hundreds of treatment sites, 20,000 miles of pipes and over half a million tests. 70% of our water comes from rivers and around 30% from underground reservoirs. But even for the rivers, the groundwater is still important because it flows naturally from aquifers. And this is especially important when the weather is dry. This means much of our water passes through limestone rocks and softer chalk, which is why our water is considered hard in this region. Surprisingly, the minerals in these rocks not only make your water taste better, but also contribute towards your daily calcium intake. This is the start of the filtration process. The first step is to pass the water through screens to remove any large objects. We then want to remove smaller particles through a process called flocculation. Finally, we put a tiny amount of chlorine in our water to keep it clean whilst it travels through our pipe network. It's an incredibly thorough process. In fact, we generate 1.6 million test results each year and take 200,000 samples of our water to make sure it's at optimum quality. Following final treatment, the water leaves the treatment works before being pumped to you through our networks of pipes and pumping stations. The quality of our water is among the best in the world. In fact, it constantly beats bottled water varieties for taste. What's more surprising is that the water used to flush your toilets is the same quality as the drinking water from your tap. Baths, showers, washing up, cleaning clothes and flushing the toilet all use large amounts of water. Once water's been used, we call it wastewater. On average, each of our 10 million customers uses more than 140 litres of water a day, which is above the industry average and the government's aim of 130 litres. Many parts of the country, including our region, are now classed as water stressed. This means that if we carry on using the same amount of water or more, there may not be enough to go around in the future. We can all do our bit to help by using less water, like taking shorter showers instead of using the bath and turning off the tap while we brush our teeth. To find out more and see what else you can do to save water, visit thameswater.co.uk forward slash save water.